to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. While I'm speaking, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Choose. Remember we, we, how we started this lecture? That you write down the things that lack of financial resources have cost to you. What then is the pathway to wealth? Seeing that our lives are, can be messed up by the absence of this and can be made efficient by the presence of this. Let me just balance another fallacy and then we'll discuss a few things no matter how much time I have will work. The fallacy is believing that spirituality will automatically on its own translate into wealth and abundance that gives you stability is a very well-intentioned truth but it's destructive that just because i have a healthy relationship with the lord jesus christ i love him with all my heart i'm a prayer warrior god forbid that i suffer my brothers and my sisters listen to me in the name of jesus and the name of honesty if you do not understand the dimensions of the kingdom excelling in one aspect of the kingdom does not replace another he said i will give you keys not a key a house has many doors if you have the key to the kitchen alone if you are hungry good for you but if you need to use the restroom and it is only the key to the kitchen you have you are still in the house, but you will see how, ineff how inefficient you will be. You do well in that house to the degree to which you have the keys to all the doors. If you have visitors and it's only the key to the restroom you have, do you put them there? No. So just to say I am in the kingdom and I have a key, a key of prayer or a key of spirituality, it will not automatically, no, listen i love jesus so i'm a man of prayer i'm a man of signs and wonders i didn't come from a background that taught us this it didn't give us this balance and thank god for bridging it early enough we would have been paying the price today and making nations to pay the price there are implications to ignoring other dimensions of the kingdom you are not the only one who will go down you will punish generations Are we blessed for many years we were told that you forget about all these nonsense people who are carnal you just focus on god and see if he will disappoint you ah, i know people today some of them wonderful contemporaries in ministry have you seen people go to pray and then they walk around for three hours you think they are praying they are thinking the bills are killing them We have children loitering around our society today. Children that come from Christian homes, but because they ignored this dimension, they trivialized it. Let me tell you this. You know how Satan attacks people? He studies what you know and what you don't know. Then he builds the system of attack out of your ignorance. The Bible says no weapon fashioned. Weapons don't just come. They are fashioned through study. Oh, he notices that your, your theology is imbalanced. He can't attack you in the area of fasting. He can't make you backslide because you are passionate. You've gotten the key there. So he will come to the areas you have ignored and build a system of attack from it. Shalis kanima haska most of our ladies that go into prostitution is it with poor men 
please talk to me in the name of honesty the hotels that they keep them do you pay for it for nothing with it for nothing some of you are in ministry here it's until recently god began to correct that narrative you go and carry somebody who is a preacher and take to your father and they say okay my friend what are you doing i said well the lord called me i'm you know i'm a co-laborer with god and so on and so forth now watch this for a long time it was like a scar a demeaning scar to call upon the name of the lord when did answering the call become a cause the people are sincere they look at you and say, what, what is the meaning of what do you do? Say, I serve God. What does that mean? Listen, God can be speaking to the lady. This is the man I've appointed for you. But poverty can change that prophecy and take that lady into the hand of a, a, a devil somewhere. And we keep watching and say it does not matter. Please, for the sake of your children, listen to what I'm telling you. You ignore what I'm telling you you will pay the price some of you here you are in this city right now i don't mean to make you feel sad i i, I hope you understand that i'm not you, you get what I'm, I'm saying as you are seated right now your loved ones are waiting for you by any means to learn this thing and come to them because they are absolutely clueless about what to do with their lives let's be sincere with ourselves this is more than an issue of car and house it's a matter of life and death there are people today who have gone to the grave pastor who had no business going there poverty took them like an usher ushered them from earth to another realm the body of jesus was hanging on that cross 33 year old body hanging on that cross prayer could not bring it down fasting could not bring it down it took wealth to carry the body of your jesus to bring it down was the tomb your own do you know that tomb had an owner otherwise they would have left the body of jesus outside where then would resurrection happen would you ever be able to say oh grave where is your was there ever a grave it took wealth to make a grave happen for prophecy to happen listen do not think that this is some jamboree financial prosperity conference just jumping for nothing this is with a kingdom paradigm don't reject poverty don't allow well-meaning people whether they are preachers businessmen or whatever it is don't allow anybody make you to make a poor decision to remain poor it is not spiritual the unfortunate thing is that it will take you a long time before you believe you are wrong by the time you turn back to correct it you are already a grandfather the elderly people have wisdom but they don't have time to correct it young people have time but they don't have wisdom to make right decisions conferences like this match the old and the young and gives wisdom to your time are you blessed so it is god's desire to prosper us let me give you three reasons why god prospers then i'll touch on one other thing and then we're done thank you sir Thank you so much. God bless you. Please pay attention. There are three biblical reasons why God prospers us in this kingdom. Number one. The first reason God prospers us in this kingdom is so that we can live a comfortable life. Please write it down. The first reason why God prospers us in this kingdom is to enable us to live a comfortable life. God is not against your comfort. In fact, let me pause here for a minute and, and mention something here. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. The first and the last is dangerous. You shouldn't be there. 
the first realm which is the lowest is called survival as far as quality of living is concerned there are four realms number one survival number two comfort number three luxury number four extravagance both survival and extravagance can destroy your life four realms of living the least is survival then comfort then luxury then extravagance is god speaking to us god desires for us to live a comfortable life please burn it in your heart and don't feel guilty about it god desires for me to live a comfortable life it is his will and i believe it with all my heart the second reason why god blesses us in this kingdom and why he prospers us is so that we can finance god's purposes on earth to finance god's purposes on earth to be actively involved in this project called kingdom come the second major reason why god prospers and why god blesses in this kingdom is to enable us to finance god's end time agenda in fact god's agenda please look up did you know sir that in other religions it is part of the training and the indoctrination that you must be part of fi providing finance for the kingdom agenda you understand what i'm saying that means for instance you look at other religions like islam and and, and maybe buddhism and the rest it is not a special ceremony to coerce people it's part of the training process from childhood that as you grow it is a responsibility upon you to make sure that you provide financial resources for kingdom activities that is a theology that is not taught the average believer foundationally speaking when we mentor believers immediately they give their lives to jesus christ this should be part of their training to know that supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is not something that happens during a fundraising or during a special program it is part of the believers responsibility that means you don't have to wait until a special offering or a special collection no 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 i am a child of god i am an ambassador of the kingdom my resources should be part of kingdom come David was so passionate about building God a house that he said, Lord, I will build you a house. Even though you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You don't need an earthly place, but I can't be in this palace. I can't be this. And then you don't have a house. And God said it was a good thing. But your hands have shed too much blood. I will not allow you to build. He said, still, I will gather the resources for my son to come and build. The character of love is that it gives. For God so loved that he gave. Your seeds. There are mission agencies. There are individuals. There is the house of God like this. I sat back and I watched, a, um, I think, one of the, what, what do you call it now? The, the clips. Skip him. Yes. I was so touched, I was just waving my head. Look at the joy that was on the face of those children. Listen to me. The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost is not free. You have to understand this. Number two, this God that we lift is very heavy. It takes resources to lift him. Oh, we lift your name high. Think about what you are saying. It takes resources to lift him high above every other God so that the nations can see. We need the availability of financial resources. Number three, very quickly. Why does God bless us in this kingdom? He blesses us to give us an opportunity to reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world. To reveal the love 
and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way to reveal the love and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way very powerful definition to reveal the love and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way please look at me god is not only the god of christians he is the god of all flesh and pastor gave a very powerful powerful example very powerful teaching before he went down he said the truth is that there are people who cannot receive these true riches we're talking about and so their prosperity and their well-being is dependent on your own obedience to god it is difficult for god to be able to reach down to them because they do not even have the faculty to receive so he will depend on you being prosperous and then you will reach out to them you are the revelation of god to them so every time god blesses me i'm aware this is why it came dr miles munro said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said abuse is inevitable you know the reason why people just abuse money because they do not know why it came it's more than just building houses and having cars number one my comfort number two the kingdom number three the world god so loved the world he didn't just love believers alone are we together it is important I learned this very early. Spare me the next 10 minutes if you can. And then let's begin to build on how God prospers. Let's do a quick recap. I started by setting a few foundations as to the understanding that governs kingdom wealth. That all wealth comes from God. And then that all wealth belong to God. Don't forget. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, all wealth comes from God. So that when we are done, when you go home, you do a handover ceremony. Lord, I'm tired of taking a load that is not my own. You told me your yoke is easy. This thing on me is about to kill me. That means it didn't come from you. I relinquish ownership like a faithful bride. I'm comfortable with stewardship. Remain a bar. I'm tired of carrying a load that is bigger than me. Ownership is a serious responsibility stay away from it and focus on stewardship you do not have the strength to manage the burden of ownership it takes a creator to truly be an owner the creator to be the owner are we blessed then we began to speak that to prosper means to do well by the way did i give you a scripture let me give you one i think we should look at one scripture Your pastor made reference to it. Psalm 35, 27. Psalm 35. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in my prosperity. Remember, we dealt with five areas of prosperity. Remember, number one, spiritual prosperity involves your being born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, growing in the knowledge of the Lord. I commend you, he says, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. If you are not growing spiritually, you are not growing in the knowledge of God, growing in love, then you are bankrupt spiritually. Number two, mentally, we spoke about that, the development of your will, emotions, intellect. 
sustaining superior belief systems philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 the bible says let this mind the word let means to permit permit this mind this belief system to be in you which was also in christ jesus the bible puts it in a very interesting way it said this sign shall follow them that believe that means i know what you believe by looking at what is following you are we together now yes you don't drive what is following you you change what you believe what is following you is coming in honor to what you believe if trouble calamities disfavor all kinds of things are following you they are coming in honor to the belief system that you have you don't just cast them away there is a dimension of deliverance called deliverance through transformation deliverance is not only conducted it is preached And then bodily prosperity, your health, don't forget. Freedom from sickness, diseases, yokes, and all kinds of demonic things that plague our bodies. Financial prosperity, freedom from poverty, remember, lack, and the negative effects that come. There are negative effects, jealousy, anger. All these things are effects that come with a life of financial bankruptcy. Then relational prosperity, of course very important now let's discuss the economic system of the kingdom we're dealing with the laws of wealth and abundance let me just start by way of introduction and then we'll continue please whatever you have to do make that sacrifice as much as you can don't miss tomorrow's service praise the name of the lord the lord is going to be taking us from one level to the other is god lifting someone already how god blesses this is a world that works based on knowledge god designed this kingdom to operate based on knowledge the bible says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light hallelujah isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine why for your light is come not your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you amplify it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you then it says for darkness shall cover the earth same word used in genesis chapter one to who bohu confusion and chaos and gross darkness the people the people are darker than the earth darkness is upon the earth but upon the people is gross darkness then it says but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise then it says gentiles shall come hallelujah gentiles shall come not to you not to you not to you not to you they kept passing you when you didn't have light they didn't come to you there is something that will make them pay attention to you it's called light it's a product light gentiles shall come to your light while the gentiles are coming their arrogant kings have light so they won't come immediately they will keep studying you but a time will come like the queen of sheba they will be compelled to see the excellency of your rising they come not to your light the brightness of your rising light is powerful please listen to me the moment the light of god comes liberty comes the moment the light of god comes enlightenment comes john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not oh light is powerful believe me light is powerful psalms 82 and verse 5 very powerful scripture they know not the bible says neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some all of you are children of the most high the tragedy next verse but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes we must trust God for light, illumination by the Spirit. Are we blessed? So what you are about to learn now, in the next... Do I have 10 minutes, sir? 
okay please let me 10 minutes i apologize already you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change i will never be the same i've touched his grace my life must change prophesy to yourself i will never be the same i've touched his grace my life must change the day i found these truths i cried like a baby i cried like a baby i rolled before the god of my salvation i waved poverty goodbye and i was shocked it waved me back i'm sorry if it sounds arrogant but it is knowledge that gives you stability what you are about to learn listen to me it is not an opinion this thing i'm teaching you now is older than us we didn't invent it we only found it jeremiah 6 16 says stand in the way it says ask for the ancient path it says when you have found it walk in it you will find rest for your soul these are the truths brothers and sisters that the patriarchs in the bible walk with these are the truths that non-christians who will not profess jesus are still walking in it i give you a guarantee by the god of heaven if you pay attention to these truths you are learning then you are on a flight that will never go down again Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? There are laws that govern wealth and abundance. They are called kingdom laws. The economic system of the kingdom is based on laws. Please pay attention. Precepts and laws that if we walk in keeping with these spiritual truths they sustain the ability to lift us to realms beyond the reach the limitations of poverty and so on and so forth deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1 it shall come to pass the bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it leaves you with a blessing that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing will come upon you and will overtake you hallelujah for a very long time, there has been an age-long fight between businessmen and pastors. Let's do a reconciliation service in one minute. Business people claim that pastors and ministers of the gospel only focus on giving, tithing, and so on and so forth, and tell people to prosper. And in truth, many people have done these things and it doesn't seem like the kind of prosperity they desired came to them. And then, here we have business people who say, forget about all those nonsense pastors are teaching you. You just come and learn principles here and there. And all of them in one way or the other have results to show. Are we together? The reason is because two of them are holding different sides of the same coin. Please look up. That when it has to do with wealth and abundance, it's a combination of spiritual laws and natural laws. They all together are called the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance. Are we together? So the laws of wealth and abundance are divided into two. There are spiritual laws. Please take note. There are spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. And then there are natural laws or business laws or physical laws. The assignment, let me tell you this. Listen, 
the assignment of the spiritual laws is to guarantee the safe arrival of financial resources that's it then the physical laws are responsible for the management and the multiplication of those resources if you know only the spiritual laws you will keep having testimonies once in a while but you will still be poor you will not get to that point where you can perpetuate wealth because the spiritual laws listen to me they ensure the arrival and the insurance the security of financial resources but when you want to perpetuate wealth and step into the dimension the bible calls the wealthy place living an inheritance for your children and your children's children you will have to understand the natural laws are we together so let me deal with the spiritual laws i'll just pick one for tonight and then we'll continue remember kingdom laws are divided into two as far as financial prosperity is concerned there are the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance there are the physical laws so let's start with the spiritual laws the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance <laughs> is not giving please look up the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is not tithing the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender now if you do not understand this and you do not put it in this order it may not profit your knowledge the law of absolute surrender first kings chapter 3 please the whole verse for study is from verse 3 to 14 but we may not have all the time so let's just look at maybe verse 3 and 4 look up please the bible says and solomon loved the lord many times we think about his giving the thousand bond offerings he gave his encounter with god and the blessings that followed but the bible says solomon it talks about his relationship with god walking in the statutes of david his father i have discovered pastor that for people to be wealthy and still be relevant the first law is the law of absolute surrender where everything you have your life your wealth your intellect is poured like a drink offering if that does not happen i don't care what else you obey there will be a side effect in the future proverbs 23 and verse 26 proverbs 23 please take it high for me proverbs 23 26 let's read together please one two three four five six the first six words ready one to read my son give me not your offering not your tithe not your business idea leave that one i want your heart because i designed the heart to host god so everything that is in your heart is your god no matter how you pretend it not to be there let me tell you this when your heart truly belongs to the lord when he looks at it he should reflect him back he should see himself but every time he looks at your heart he sees a business idea he looks at your heart he sees something else this is a secret that the lord taught me why is it that many people keep laboring they have all kinds of they have the shop okay you said i should sell buy and sell something and i will increase now i have a shop and it looks like i'm struggling when god can find the heart of a man You read your Bible and see what God did to men who gave him everything. I hope you know that when you get saved, you didn't really give God your life. The theological explanation is that you received his life. You give God your life when you are ready to be used by him. Not when you are saved. I know we say it, I give you my heart. God understands what we are saying. But I'm telling you in truth, surrender when your heart is with him god can say transfer that 10 million and you say lord it was always yours the last treasurer betrayed him 
God is still looking for treasurers. They replace many of the apostles, not the treasurer. God is still looking for men today who will, he said, his bishopric let another take. The Bible never says Paul was a treasurer. He came as an apostle. God is still looking for stewards. I'm telling you, there are dimensions of wealth and abundance we are yet to see. God is looking for men and women. Do you know the reason why you trust banks? I'm wrapping up. You trust banks because of one simple explanation. Ease of withdrawal. That's it. The reason why you trust banks is because at any time of the day, you can slot your ATM and your 10,000 will come out. If the bank cannot give you your money, if you become like that ATM, God will no longer have a problem. Whether the money is with him or is with you, it means the same thing. Ease of withdrawal. Are we together now? Yes, sir. That everything God gives me, including my life, this encounter message is about wealth, though. not even just about surrender or ministry. Are you seeing where a lot of people miss it? So many times we teach about prosperity and there are people full of carnality and lust in their heart. Just wanting money. They can kill for money. They can betray for money. They can leave God for money. Just give me the anointing for money, they say. Show me the business idea. But that lust and that corruption, God says, not my way. If it's my way, you must die first to leave. This, we are discussing wealth. God is able to trust your pastors with the resources and the influence he's given them because he's found out that whether it's with them or it's with him, he's still glorified. Please listen very carefully. It's a big secret I have found with God. If you don't give God your heart, you have not started doing anything with him. Many of us bribe God. We come and give God a seed or give God something. And then our lusts are still piling up there, waiting for money to activate them. Do you know why God needs your heart? Because this money you see, there is a spirit behind it. If your heart is not surrendered to God, prosperity will tear you into pieces. By the time you become so prosperous, you may not see the need to study scriptures again. What for? When you almost don't have any prayer point again. You have a personal security system, a personal doctor, multiple citizenships, bank accounts and investments scattered around the world. Then we may become like the rich fool. My soul found fine rest. And he says, today, that heart you refuse to give me, today. Listen to me, believers. The excellency of the entrustment of kingdom wealth in our lives it's not only dependent on business ideas and all of these things. It's that God can find a people who love him so passionately. People who love him that anything at all. I continue to pray this prayer all the time, pastor. That anything God will ever give me. That I would not be able to give him back. Or use it for his glory. May it never come to me. Minister Frekel Mo sang a song that really blessed me. It's been an anthem for me of worship. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. There are people who betrayed the Lord because he prospered them. There are gospel ministers who came and rode before the church altar. They received impartations and prophecies. The moment influence began to rise, they said, God, I suspect you are a nuisance to my rising. 
you wait until the day I need you. There are business people who that circumcision did not happen to. There are even preachers who that circumcision did not happen to. Before God starts with you, he says, I don't trust you until my, your heart is in my hands. Influence can destroy. You know what it means when you get to a point where human beings are on water you worship me because of it and god is saying before you become an embarrassment to yourself let's deal with it here i don't have a problem lifting you i don't have a problem prospering you one connection i can bring to your life can wipe your family's tears forever listen to me there are people here we are wrapping up but the holy spirit is speaking to you it's not because god cannot lift you it's not because Abuja is a good land. Nigeria is a good land. Africa is a good land. There are people who stumbled into prepared blessings because their hearts were already prepared before the Lord. There is something I know about God. When God decides to shake himself to lift you, you yourself will be the first spectator to your miracle. You will watch with wonder, God, what is this? listen this is a prosperity conference and many times it's very difficult to give testimonies but i'll share one have God with my life and they said no we are not doing this emotionally and I stood there I said okay what is the meaning of this and then I remembered when you give God your everything then he says now shift and let me show you what I can do don't think I don't know what I'm saying my brothers and my sisters like I said we live in a world where people misunderstand everything preachers say. So it's difficult to even share testimonies that challenge you. Because people will be angry and there are people who may mistake in this now for pride. But I'm saying it so that you will believe. Testimonies were recorded, that's why we have faith today. It was in this city while I was in Zaria. A group of real estate people came and they said we enter a covenant with God that everywhere we build every estate we build in the world we must keep a house for you every provided we build an estate just know there is a house there i have never gone to one of them to check what is there which one is my own because i gave him my heart i truly did many of you watched the videos while i was in kenya a few years ago having a program and i'm about to i'm done just greeted everybody and i was on my way and the pastor calls me and a group of businessmen who were in partnership with the american government and doing a business and they say apostle the lord led us to give you five properties in kenya i have not gone there i don't know where the ground is they said choose what you do with it whether it's to sell it i said god what are you doing to me what is this So listen to me. For some of you who sit down and say, preachers don't know, just leave me to hustle. You keep suffering the way you are suffering. Or pay attention and let God show you the path that brings you out. Can I tell you this? I stand before the God of my salvation. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God, including my life. May God forgive me if I stand here and I'm lying before his people. There is nothing houses nonsense businesses oh no 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 
Why should I fear what people say? For they, they don't, don't know, know what you mean to me. We're well, praying. Some of you are seated here and saying, Apostle, I didn't come from a family that had any privilege. And I'm the first God wants to raise. You came here with documents about business. Leave it. We'll discuss that one later on. What God wants this nice is not your document. You have been throwing it. We are going to spend the next two minutes. I don't know how you will cry before God in this church. And those following online. You've not seen a prosperity conference like this. I know you are not shouting up and down, but I'm showing you an irrefutable formula. There is a God in heaven who can lift. There is a God who can bless. He can take a man's prayer request and give you as a gift. This is a lover's affair. It's not just some selfish exchange between you and someone. No. Is someone ready to cry before God? In one minute. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty, O morning star, you truly are everything, everything. Lord, you are Spend one minute crying before your God. Take away the lust. Take away the corruption. The pressure to prove a point. Lord, prosper me. There are relatives who don't believe me. I need to show them there is nothing to show, my brothers and sisters. Pray. Lord, bless me. There are people I need to punish. There are people I need to know. That's not the kingdom's way. It is Jesus, ever Jesus only. In this kingdom, we only gain when we lose. Whosoever keeps his life shall lose it, the Bible says. Just one minute and we are done. Father, take away the corruption and the loss that is in my heart. When God tells you to hand over the, your heart, money can destroy you. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it can bring pride. It can bring spiritual complacency. Prosperity gives you options. Take everything, Jesus. It is yours. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours. It's yours. It's yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let that be your anthem, anything. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Father, we are crying before you, the God of heaven. You know our hearts, you know our lusts, 
you know our tendencies revealed and not yet revealed we pray in the name of jesus that in this kingdom wealth conference let there be a genuine circumcision circumcise our hearts oh god so that you can trust us with tremendous levels of access to the resources of heaven so that we do not become disappointments to ourselves and the kingdom on account of your blessing take our hearts oh god so that our prayer lives don't go down as we rise so that our word study lives don't go down as we rise so that our sense of regard for god and for men that it will not fade while we rise bring us to a point oh god where you are exalted above anything you give us this is our prayer tonight Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the Kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.